cancelled unfortunately this morning because of the weather which we will show you the game between Arma and Tyrone at Clonus so it's a, a fairly decent swap I think you'll agree now just before we close in the Bally Buffet match as I said heavy heavy rain all morning up there in Donegal forced the cancellation of this as Marty Morrissey can now tell us Yes, very disappointing news here in Bally Buffet with the match being cancelled at 2.45. Jerry Kenevy, the Roscommon referee, inspected the pitch uh, for about a half an hour before deciding, as he told me uh, officially himself, that the pitch was unplayable and for the safety of the players would not go ahead. Well, the news now is that the Donegal Down match will be played here in Bally Buffet next Saturday afternoon at 3.30. Joining me is Noreen Doherty, the Donegal County Secretary. Disappointing for everybody here in Bally Buffet. Oh, absolutely, Marty. I suppose this is the right decision. You know, the referee took the right decision, but it's very, very disappointed. I mean, there's been so much work has gone on with TV cameras and what have you and work going on in the pitch and that. Very disappointing, but as you see yourself, the weather, there's no option, really. Next Saturday is an unusual choice for the replay, and I put that in inverted commas, because 3.30, Bally Buffet, Donegal, Bank Holiday Weekend. Yeah, that's going to be enormous difficult for the Gardaí and all to steward it. And the thing is, it's going to be a very, very busy weekend in Donegal. I suppose it's not ideal at half past three Saturday. Uh, we have to accept also council ruling on Sunday probably would have been a better option. But with the fixtures chaos probably in Ulster, that can't be either. So we have to run with it, Marty. Would you have preferred knowing Saturday evening, six o'clock or Sunday afternoon? Saturday evening may have been a better option. Obviously, Sunday would have been the best option. But, you know, probably that isn't an option really. Saturday is not ideal, you know. Well, that's the news. Thank you very much, Noreen. That's the news here from Bally Buffet. Still raining here. Donegal versus Down next Saturday afternoon at 3.30 here in Bally Buffet. Thank you very much, Marty Morrissey. Obviously a disappointment to lose that match, but uh, that's the way it goes. It's the first match I think we've lost in the Championship for some time, as Tommy Lyons, who was here uh, on the panel with us, was saying to me. Colin Rourke uh, also here with us. I can't remember us losing a game through the weather for some time. I, I just from here, I, I can't remember any time that we lost a game. We had the famous Donegal uh, uh, Derry yeah. game that shouldn't have been played. Exactly. So maybe, yeah. maybe we're learning lessons because if the pitch is unplayable, it's unplayable. And we yeah. should push it off to another day. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a bad sign for the summer. Not just being called up because <laughs> of the weather. It doesn't help the RTO beat the unit. But I mean, you know, overall, I think the players' interests are, are, are better served by not playing in very bad pitches. And, I think it's a, it's a brave call to call a game off. Ah, sure, yeah. Well, obviously, Colin Rourke, this other match, uh, is equally important in the Gulf Street Championship, and particularly after drawing last Sunday. Yes, well, a lot of people are saying that RTE should have been shown that game anyway, so I suppose maybe they're getting their wish in a roundabout way. But I think it was a very exciting finish last Sunday. Great-hearted football from both sides, and I think we can expect more of the same today. I suppose the news that Peter Canavan has... Uh, is missing the game through injury is a huge blow to Tyrone, mainly because the Tyrone forward line is predominantly a young side mm. and he has been the father figure there very much for them. And without him, you'd wonder how they're going to cope. Yeah, it's a bit like the Roy Keane situation, isn't it? I mean, the psychological loss of the player, Tommy, I suppose, as much as anything, apart from his footballing contribution, obviously. Yeah, I'm sure P Peter... I'm talking about Peter Calvin, oh, sorry, not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Peter is, 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 is more relaxed about his football than Roy is. But, um, you know, I think Peter Calvin obviously has been one of Tyrone's main players. And, and as Colin said, it, he, he is kind of daddy of them all around the whole young forward line. And I think he'd be a big loss to them. They'll struggle to come to terms with losing because he was a great man to win, to kick simple points and go on, peel off, uh, off another man that wins the ball and left or right foot. He was yeah. always worth two or three points sure. a game didn't play well the last day, ironically enough, and, and uh, maybe he was carrying that injury into the game. We all know it's very hard if you carry an injury into a game one week, it's very hard to be, sure. be fit the following week. You know? Well, there was a lot of questions for both sides to answer after last Sunday's draw, maybe more for Tyrone than for Armagh. Yes, I mean, Armagh were the underdogs the last day. They, they laid out their stall in a certain way. I think the tactic of playing Kieran McGinney back as a second centre-back worked enormously well. Um, and I think Tyrone struggled to cope with the intensity of battle that Armagh brought to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, you know, listen to, to um, Art McCrory afterwards and... Um, they felt that the league games had been too easy for so them. But Eugene McKenna. Eugene yeah. McKenna, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, so... I think I think Tyrone would have benefited a lot from, from, from that championship game. Armagh have played a lot of the races. I see they're laying out their team a little bit differently this week. Yeah. So it'll be interesting tactical, tactical battle again. And I think that was one of the highlights of the last mm -hmm. week's game. OK, well, these two gentlemen, of course, came into a studio and into RTE today, all set to talk about Down and Donegal. So we've asked them to make a quick switch and uh, do a different analysis, obviously, of this game we have coming up. Colin, you've been looking at Tyrone in particular and some aspects of their play. Yeah, well, one of the bits that I liked about Tyrone last Sunday was when the game was going away from them, they didn't lie down and let it go. 
and uh, they kept fighting hard. Now they brought in Sean Cavanagh to play a corner foul. Sean Cavanagh, a young fellow who played with St Pat's Armagh a couple of years ago in an All-Ireland Colleges final. And uh, when all about him were sort of losing their head, he kept it, scored a point to bring it uh, to three points, and then, of course, uh, was big enough and strong enough, which is not a noted feature of the Tyrone forward line, was able to catch his own ball, and maybe a bit lucky, I think it went through two fellas' legs there in the Armagh backs, but he was the real saviour. And uh, I suppose, in the end to this game, could have been won if uh, Peter had to do what he normally does and kick it over the bar, he gives the ball to Richard Taunton. But the one thing about it was the last five minutes of that game, Tyrone didn't fold, he kept mm -hmm. up the pace. But, uh, you know, this is a very, very experienced Armagh team. They have yeah. a couple of Ulster titles, a lot of these players. Yeah. They feel they should have won in All-Ireland. Change of management, a fresher approach, still a very, very good yeah. team. Well, this is the point Tommy Lyons and, and Colin Moore has summed it up there. You have a good team to begin with. Well, change of management can bring a new idea, just to sort of freshen things up a, a little bit, I suppose, as well. And that's the case with Armagh at the moment. Yeah, and, and I think that he's made some telling changes in the team. I think, you know, with the two, Justin McNulty at full-back and, and Ender McNulty at right corner, I think he's strengthened their full-back line, which was a weakness in their team that mm. came to Park last year and the previous year. And I think, you know, they, they, they brought in John McEntee, and he's, he's really playing good football. And... You know the the big the big the big player for them last last Sunday was Ushin McConville. I mean he, you know, a lot of people have doubted Ushin on the big day, but yeah. Ushin Ushin has delivered. I think last year for our man, he, he's delivering again this year. I think some fellas get 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 a tag on their on their shoulders and they find it very hard to get rid of it. But Ushin McConville was very good for Cross McLean for three or four years. He's been very good for our man last year and. Last week, for me, he was he was their best forward. I think you know when 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 you look at the way they laid out their team and and, and they put Kieran McGinley as a second centre back. Everybody knows Kieran McGinley's strengths as a footballer. He he's one of the greatest tacklers we have. He's 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 a great man to block a ball. I suppose he gets more blocks in than any other player, and he's always willing to drive a team forward. And you know he, he he's always. He's also a very good left foot. Yes. I find it very interesting that they played, picked him centre back this week. Yes. Uh, maybe John McEntee is going to come back in and they're going to play three men across the middle. Yeah. Because there was no space last week around that whole middle part of the pitch. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to see where the space is today. And if there is space, we could have a very different kind of game. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much for that. Let's see how it all works out and see what happens now. A reminder once again that you will pick the man of the match from this particular game. And here are the numbers. Now, forget that it says down in Donegal on the graphic there. Obviously, that's the match we were planning to have. But it is, of course, Tyrone against Armagh. The phone numbers are right. 1550-7171-15. Our from Northern Ireland, it's 0906-614-1818. Now let's pick up on commentary of this match. Ger Houlihan, the former Armagh star, is in the commentary box along with Jim Carney. The Tyrone captain Peter Canavan, seated beside co-manager Art McCrory, did not train during the week after suffering a knock early last Sunday. That was the news that greeted Tyrone fans today and then came confirmation that Peter would not be playing. Midfielder Cormac McAnallen takes over the captaincy. Philip Jordan makes Four his championship debut at left half-back. Richard Thornton is the man who comes in at top of the left for Peter Canavan. And Sean Kavner is retained at top of the right, wearing number 19. Armagh's satisfaction with the changes they made the last day is reflected in the retention of Francis Bellew at left full-back. Kieran McGinney, the captain, now starts at centre half-back in a more conventional way than wearing number 15, and Ronan Clark, the full forward, is also kept in the team.
Ok, bon. The big match referee in Jonas is Brian White enjoying a great season like so many of the other top referees in the game. First attack of the match. For Irma. The left foot forward, Dears Marsden, getting it across. First scoring chance of the game, perhaps, for Paddy McKeever. He's crowded out. Kieran Gourley there for Tyrone. And they work it out of defence. Well, the drawing game was so tight. The big question being asked here today, can Tyrone find the space, the space that Ahmad denied them in the drawing game? First sideline drive of the game is gone wide. First kick out of the match for Tyrone's impressive new goalkeeper Peter Ward. Ama again doing well in the middle of the field as they did in the drawing game. Stephen McDonald for Ama. Good crowding by the Tyrone defence. Good man to man marking. John McEntee there to help. A hard challenge went in there from Colin Holmes. A free in to Ama. And referee Colin Holmes will be spoken to here by referee Brian White. Well, to give us his uh, view on that incident and how the game is shaping up in the first two minutes, we're pleased to introduce you, Jared Houlihan, one of the outstanding Armagh forwards, retired just a few years. Yes, Jim, it was a good start by Armagh here. Uh, unfortunately, Ronan Clark, my own club mate, down injured. Uh, Ronan had a terrific game of last day, and I'm sure Tyrone won a really stamp of authority and make sure Ronan did, isn't have the same influence that he had on the last, year, last week's game. The first yellow card of the match goes to Colin Holmes, who ironically plays his club football in Armagh with the Harps Club. Now away from the action, uh, to the left of Paddy McKeever as he prepares to take this free. Uh, another player is uh, requiring attention, another Armagh player. And referee Brian White made the long journey over to the sideline to uh, speak with his uh, linesman and to consult and after all that Gerard Cadlin of Tyrone will be spoken to. And Gerard, a lot of tension obviously here in this game and that's not surprising as Gerard Cadlin is spoken to. Yeah, I think he uh, actually hit Pierre McGinney off the ball there uh, but uh, the game is very, very tight. Armagh obviously more physical of the two teams and obviously want to impose themselves on Tyrone. Paddy McKeever then throws it and drives it all the way over the bar. Great start by Armagh. Favour the left footed uh, free taker. He made the most of the opportunity. <laughs> Peter Ward bearing his kick out, knowing that Hama won the first uh, two or three. Cormac McAnallan knocked off that ball with a surprising ease there for a strong young man. And Amaz's physical strength uh, already a factor. Good punch through. Nice pick up by Stephen McDonald. Now the angle's very tight there. He's got to make a bit of space for himself. He's won it free. Now already Jared Hulahan is clear that the pressure is coming from Amaz. Yes, Armagh's delivering the ball long and quickly into the full forward line. Steve McDonald, who was disappointed with the game last year, did very, very well, worked his free. <laughs> Paddy McKeever then in the uh, fourth minute of the match. That one is true. 
His confidence is high after getting the opening point. Now he's got the second two points in those still. Armada, the leaders, McKeever has got both. Great colour and excitement in Tonus as always. Now Peter Ward must be wondering where he put this one to get away from the uh, high fielders and the MI team. Knocked down by Jared Cadman and it broke favourably for him. Good play by Jared Cadman. Comes to a couple of tackles and then he loses it. John McEntee back helping his uh, midfield. And in support, John Toll, who did so well in the drone game. Now good play to Guillermo Marathon, a danger man in the MI attack. Great pass by Guillermo Marathon. And there's a man free here in front of the goal, it's the full forward, he puts the ball over the bar, Ron and Pat, content with the point rather than looking for the goal. A sign of the confidence in the Amar team running through the field, and Andrew McCann made a telling run. Yeah, an absolutely brilliant move by Armagh there, letting the ball go long to Jermyn Marsden, and Andrew McCann doing what he does well, supporting from behind. Now Ronan Clark, in his mind, uh, he knew there that there were Tyrone men all around him. He did the right thing. The third yellow card of the game comes in only the sixth minute. It's that kind of game. But again, it's, they're playing for high stakes in Cronus. Two tremendous teams, two of the best in the business. Clash of bodies, Tyrone Winifrey. Now we've had to wait over six minutes for a meaningful attack uh, by Tyrone, and straight away it's Sean Cadner, the goal hero who played a blinder in the drone game. He's already making an impact in the replay, just coming up to the seventh minute, a well-won ball by Cadner, nice turn and over the bar. Yes, great ball into Sean Cadner, tremendous player this young lad, very big and strong and actually very, very quick. Uh, and cancelling out the point scored by his college mate Ronan Clark. Tremendous drive by uh, Brendan Tierney, the one of our keeper, very so experienced. Kieran McGinney, spiritual leader of this Armagh team. Strong man, but also a very skillful player. Now, just a little bit of trouble there, but he got out of it nicely by using the fist to pass. And again, sign of a good player that he will always use that option. Tyrone, win it back. Now remember, there's no Peter Canavan forward, but Sean Cadner can be the new star of the Tyrone uh, team with a good enough supply. But Arma uh, look at the moment like a team who will deny an opposition forward line a supply of the ball. Good work by Chris Sloan, the strong man at fullback for Tyrone, out to Kieran Gooley and again to Philip Jordan, the uh, championship debutant who's fouled. Colin Holmes for uh, Tyrone, one of three players who's on yellow cards. Good run forward to Philip Jordan, an attacking type of uh, halfback. Three to Tyrone. Stephen O'Neill standing over the ball, the All-Star who was so disappointed with his performance the last day, but he is a very young man, of course, and expectations so high. Stephen O'Neill then, off his left, in and over the bar. Brendan Tierney keeping his eye on it, content to shepherd it over the bar, knowing that it would be dangerous to try to knock that ball out, even if he could. Yeah, I think this is a crucial score for Stephen O'Neill. Disappointing last week, but surely an early score to settle him down. Now, Brendan Tierney surprised me there, didn't go for the uh, big man around the middle. But uh, it's been won and well won by Aidan O'Rourke. Kieran McGinney. Towards top of the right, won by Brian uh, Robinson. The man in support is Philip Jordan. Tyrone had to use three men there to get that ball uh, across in front of their defence, but uh, they did it uh, 
by making sure each time, and that was the key, they got their passes in. Until Armagh won it back. Now there will be a free in to Armagh here for a late challenge. Almost certainly Brian White, right up at the play, is running upfield to give this free. And a little bit, a little lack of discipline there in the Tyrone team after the ball was driven. Yeah, Brian White's been right on top of this game from, the, from day one. Uh, he's obviously a big three player for off the ball instant. And then Tyrone have seemed to have lost the discipline at this period of the game. Ten minutes gone. Oshin McConville, the scoring star of the drawn game for Armagh, floats that one in and across the face of the goal and wide. And uh, proving perhaps that it's not always easy to put two outstanding displays back to back. But of course, it's early in Florence yet. Just 11 minutes gone. Cormac McAnallen wins it in the middle of the field for Tyrone. He's now the captain, a very young man to be given the captaincy, but that's how high they rate him and what they think of him in Tyrone as a leader. Kevin Hughes playing now out around the middle of the field. To Brian Doher, just not in the game yet, but he plays a good ball in until it runs through to Brendan Tierney. He had men right and left there, so the Tyrone forwards just not uh, thinking as defenders uh, just yet, but now they get a couple of tackles in and uh, put the fullback Justin McNulty under a lot of pressure. And it's won by Sean Carner, and he wins a free. And just a thought, Gerard Hulham, that really, the last day and today, there's almost nothing that Sean Carner can do, can do wrong. No, he's a, great, he's a great young talent, but it just shows you, he also has to work as well as scoring, and, and they put Armand under a lot of pressure, and got the reward there, and that's the easy point. And that easy point is by Stephen O'Neill, that's his second of the game. Uh, two injections of confidence uh, for Stephen O'Neill. Brendan Tierney straight down the middle, but Kevin Hughes is running onto it for Tyrone, and Brian Doher picks up the pieces. It was a good knockdown uh, by uh, Kevin Hughes, and Brian Doher's going through, and he wins a free. Good work by Doher, but especially good work by Kevin Hughes, and a good move by the Tyrone uh, management team to send out Kevin Hughes to the, to the midfield, where he has broken the stranglehold that Ahmad did seem to be exerting in the early minutes. Stephen O'Neill will kick this one, and Jared Hulham, you were noticing just a bit further back to field that Tr Tyrone have made a change in their approach to uh, Oshin McConville as we watch Stephen O'Neill kick this ball over the bar. Yes, well, Oshin was the star of the show last week as far as I was concerned for Armagh, and Rand McManaman now has moved to Paddy McKeever, and Philip Jordan's obviously doing a man-to-man -man job on Oshin McConville. As Stephen O'Neill puts over his third and Tyrone's uh, four, uh, point, uh, third point of the game, so now they lead by 4-3. to three. It's, This game has been turned right around. Thirteen and a half minutes gone on a magnificent afternoon for football in Florence. A beautiful setting, a superb pitch, two wonderfully fit, totally committed teams. Uh, Brian Doher for Tyrone, looking for Sean Cadner. Oh, very good work in the, uh, by the Armagh uh, full-back line. The uh, McNulty brothers and Fancy Bellew have set well to their task, but they've got to stay on guard right through. Kieran McGinney switching the play. Very good ball by McGinney. Now the man who made the run was Stephen McDonald and a good half block in there by Brian Robinson. That's good defensive play. Now he's got to make sure of his pick up and clearance. Excellent work by Brian Robinson. But then Chris Lone in a little bit of trouble until he gets a bit of help. From his right foot back, the excellent Connor Gormley. Oh, good ball out of defence. And a second good ball out of defence. Tyrone playing so well now. Uh, play on, says referee Brian White. Good referee to Jared Cadlan. To Cormac McAnallen, the pitch is opening up in front of him. We didn't see that happen last Sunday too often. McAnallen looks for Sean Cadner. Can he get two hands on it or even one? Oh, it's knocked away from him. Great work in the Armagh pullback line again. 
Well, the McNulty's and Bell, you have a lot of hard work to do here today, but they don't seem to mind hard work. Richard Thorne just started the move there to Ryan McMenamin. He got two the last day. Ball out to Kevin Hughes. Could he go for a point from there? He can. He's pulled over the bar. Magnificent. Under pressure, but it brought out the best in Kevin Hughes. Yes, Armand worked so hard here. Ryan McManaman looks as if he's going to take a point. Great block by Francie Ballew. Ball comes back out, and then Kevin Q does the business. Francie Ballew, the uh, Armand player here, requiring attention as Tyrone lead by two points, five points to three after 15 minutes of exciting, hard, utterly absorbing championship football in Ulster. <laughs> Brendan Tierney goes down the middle again, but Tyrone are doing a lot better there. Brian Duhur. So good at supporting his midfield, so good everywhere in the middle third of the field. As uh, Tyrone come forward again, Cormac McAnallan. Now he'll go for a point from there to make it a double score lead. And the captaincy given to Cormac McAnallan when Peter Canavan had to uh, stay on the bench is bringing out the best in the young man today. What a minor he was, what an under 21 he was, and what a senior footballer he is too for Tyrone. Yes, terrific score by Cormac McAnallan, but but Tyrone have really turned this game in their head and simply because they've been getting the ball around the middle of the field and Cormac Nolan taking scores like that. Some powerful football being played here now by the two sides. First Emma, then Tyrone. Kevin Hughes, he's really making a difference. Now some people wondering just a little maybe why Kevin Hughes uh, wasn't brought out. Uh, even in the team selection, but the Wiley Tyrone uh, management team knew what they were doing. Now, Armagh had to work so hard to get out of their own uh, third of, first third of the field here, and Kieran McGinney, perhaps the man to, uh, to rally them. Oh, good ball down to Stephen McDonald. Now, to turn on and get the goal, but that right side doesn't really favour him, and the block down goes in by Kieran Gurley, and Ryan McMenamin there too, and Tyrone come away with it. It just fell, I think, on his wrong side, but it was a chance. Now, the speed of Tyrone to come into it here. Jared Cadman, there's a lot of room forward. Sean Cadman, a first run on it. He's a big young man, but he's got a lot of power. Did so well to fend off the challenge of Justin McNulty. There's another man coming across, Blanchard Bellew. Cadman to go for the point, but it took a lot out of him, and it's gone well. Yes, and Arma again delivering the ball long. Ironically, uh, Stephen McDonald, the goal scorer, king for Armagh, made a shot. mess of it, went to, no, went to bounce 20, the ball on dead ground. This is Andrew McCann, number seven, on the Armagh team. Now, a sub in the Armagh team already, they're so concerned that the attack-minded Andrew McCann, they've gone for a more defensive type player, I think, and an experienced player in Kieran Hughes. Now, McGinney for Armagh, who need a score. Chris Thorne wins it, and wins it well for Tyrone. Oh, confident play, but then it's knocked away from, uh, from Gourley. Conor Gormley there for Tyrone, good work by him, Chris Lohan in support, they were playing it just a little too tight, until Richard Thornton played it down the line, and then a very hard challenge went in on Richard Thornton, and Brian White may come back to that incident, we'll just see that a little bit later. 
There's a free air, and Brian White will stop the play almost certainly. Now there's an Amman man being spoken to here, he's John McIntyre, it's a yellow card and uh, we did feel that uh, John would be spoken to for a late challenge and a hard challenge it was too. I think Jim this is an aspect of the game we need to cut out, this is obviously a third man tackle. I don't think John lifted the elbow or anything but he stopped, he stopped Richard Thorne in his tracks. Well up to now Stephen O'Neill has been kicking the field so well off his left but this one from the right Sherrod Cabin has swung away from him. But remember what happened last Sunday late in the game when a ball dropped like that in there. Now John McEntee trying to get uh, our man to a scoring position. Knocked down very well by Chris Dawn. It's such intelligent play now in the uh, Tyrone defence. Cormac McAnallan in the middle of the field. They're finding space, Tyrone, today, unlike the last day. McAnallan, Cabden looking for it in the left, but he's played a great ball in towards Richard Thornton, but there are three Amman in there. One of them, John Toll. Kieran Hughes, uh, who came on in only the 18th minute for Andrew McCann. And he just had to get rid of that ball to Kieran. Now, now man standing underneath it in a goal scoring position has come over the bar. But there was a great challenge put in there by uh, Conor Vaughan, the on Gilmish Marston. And Gilmish content with the point, and a good point it is too. Now, as this ball drops, some people might feel that there's a goal on, but of course it's not that simple, especially in championship. Yeah, great ball by Paul McGrain. Warma well, getting great joy with this long delivery. Jimmy Mars inside his man and over the bar. Uh, Jimmy needs a big game today. Eight in a row onto it for Anna. Good play. To Steve McDonald, O'Rourke has continued his run and his foul. And this is a valuable one for Anna. Just a word, Jared, on the Armagh substitution on the 18th minute. Was it a case of needing a more defensive minded wing back than the attacking Andrew McCann? There, there was whispers all week uh, of uh, Andrew McCann having a grind strain. And I uh, don't think they expect him to last the game. Paddy McKeever then, looking for his third point of the game off freeze from the uh, right hand side with the left and he's delivered it. It seems so long since he got the opening two. This one even more important for Armour. Yes, Paddy's not known really as a free kick taker, but he's done excellently well today. Playing well again today, watching and covering and delivering. Pull forward Ronan Clark. And again, two, three challenges going in. The fourth Tyrone man there as well, putting their men under pressure and it's paying off. Now, Jared, the last day it was a man in numbers crowding out Tyrone. Now it seems to be up to it. Yeah, Tyrone have obviously got the kick up the backside they've needed uh, and they're tack hustling and tackling the packs. And Colin Holmes winning a free, which will be taken by Cormac McAnallan. A good ball to Sean Cavanagh, who is timing his runs nicely. Cavanagh is ready, two strong men. Stephen O'Neill, rather. Stephen O'Neill on the ball for uh, Tyrone. Three out. John McIntyre. Turning in field, risking the block, but getting a good delivery. Oh, that's a great uh, piece of fielding in the Tyrone defence. And great support play too. Conor Gormley made the catch. Kieran Gourley. And again, the support play of these Tyrone men, so impressive just now. And uh, McNulty there for Armagh. Playing it just a little bit short and conceding the free. And... Uh, Spoiling some very good work there, uh, Ender McNulty. He just did everything right, Jared, until the ball ran away. Yeah, great cover work, but Armagh giving the ball away very, very cheaply. Jared Cabden outside the 45. 
2 to 1, Armagh covering. And it's gone wide. for Armagh to get them into the attack again they trailed by just one now they've come back well six to five to own the leaders 25 minutes gone Brian Doher playing this one uh, short uh, and it didn't work but it has now. Conor Gormley. To get it to Ryan McManaman, who loves to go forward. This time he plays it in to Cormac McAnallen. Very good challenge by Paddy Mc McKeever. Took a little bit out of uh, McAnallen, and the delivery not so good. And the Armagh pullback back line covering and supporting. John Toll. Armagh again, timing the runs well. Ushin McConville. Good run by Ushin. There's a man free in front of the goal if he can deliver. James Marsden, he just can't spot him. Or it may have been a case that the Tyrone defence were crowding him out. A chance there, Jared Hulham, perhaps as James Marsden made a run. Yeah, Jimmer was in the oceans of space, but I just don't think Ushin had the opportunity to give the ball. Yes, Ushin going there, going for goal. Head down, but Jimmer made a great run out of picture, but a free and hopefully a score. Oshin McConville has just taken him a little bit of time to get into the game, but uh, his eye is right. It's good, and the drive is there uh, too. And now it's six points apiece in a tremendously keenly contested first half in Clonus. Peter Ward's kick out with the sun shining. John McEntee, very good run by uh, Paddy McKeever, who's got three points and three. Is there a fourth one here from play? Oh, he, it just took a little bit uh, too much out of it, and indeed the run took a little bit out of Paddy too. Now, both the defences have worked so hard and uh, got onto a lot of ball here, so scores will be very hard to come by in this fancy venue to make sure for our man. To get it to John Toll, Crossfield towards Ronan Clark. Won by uh, Chris Lawn, but there will be uh, action taken, uh, probably in the way of a free, just in from the sideline. Uh, maybe even more than a free, as Stephen O'Neill is going to be spoken to by Brian White. As Joe Kernan shows he hasn't lost it either, uh, his ability to drive in a ball. No, Brian White just noting the name of Stephen O'Neill and not producing a yellow card. The Armagh captain, great rallying force, Kieran McGinley. Now, just watching that ball go in, and uh, it's gone wide. That's for a second, Armagh supporters in the huge crowd in the court near uh, Hearnock. Thought that one was over the bar, but it was wide. Now, just under a half an hour gone, all square in Clonus. 
both teams enjoying uh, good spells and spells of dominance. Sean Kavner for Tyrone, who started this game uh, quite well. Got a good ball in towards Ryan McMenamin, but very good defensive play by uh, Armagh and, and there's uh, Justin uh, McNulty to make sure that the pass found his man and got clear. Now, Kieran McGee, good ball down. For Stephen McDonald's corner, oh, very well won by Brian Robinson there. Oh, and that's uh, a free out to Tyrone and great defensive play. And indeed, Jerry Hulham, good defensive play now by both fullback fans. Yeah, qual quality defensive play at both ends are. Tyrone look, look very dangerous. Kieran McGee, come out of nowhere, stole the ball, give it down to McNulty. And then up at the other end, Brian Robinson takes the ball right off Stephen McDonald's toe. Now, Sean Kavner here in a good challenge uh, with uh, Justin McNulty. Two strong men, Kavner the taller. And McGinney and uh, his uh, full-back line uh, supporters there doing so well. Now Brian Robinson's free. Towards uh, Cormac McAnella. Brian Doher, who's come over from the right wing, has played a good ball too towards uh, Kieran Gourley, but it's very well won by the uh, consistently excellent Kieran McGinney, who hardly ever puts in uh, a game that he does not exert a huge influence in. Chris Lawn, again, finding a lot of room. And just watch the space that Tyrone uh, are finding here today that they couldn't find the last day. Colin Holmes coming through from midfield, but there's a couple of challenges going in now. He's got to get a bit of support or get rid of the ball or it'll be a free out. And it's a free out. Brian White again, perfectly positioned to make the decision. But again, the field your excellent support play by our man. Great, great tackling. Well, certainly once it, it, both teams cross the 50, there's a lot of pressure. And crossing the 50. Is a Jamish Marsden for a man. Such skill, such technique, such a beautiful ball player, but just as we say that he gives that ball away, and that's so frustrating for uh, Marsden's legion of followers who just want him and have that desire to see him give full expression to his undoubted talent. Now, a talented footballer too, and versatile. Kevin Hughes for Tyrone, started at full forward, came out to midfield to very good effect. Now oh, that's very well run in there by uh, Kieran McGee for Armagh. A dominant figure uh, again today, and perhaps the man of the first half even. Callan Holmes. Very good ball to Kevin Hughes in a lot of room. He can kick a point from here, Kevin Hughes. But uh, he needs to give himself another bit of space. He found the space, but then clipped it just short. And that's easy for Brendan Taylor. And the McNulty to start it all over again for Armagh in the 33rd minute of the first half. Two minutes to go and whatever will be added on in this first half. Six points apiece. Scores have to come by, but there's great play by both sides. Now, will this ball break for Armagh? No, said Chris Long. Good full back play by uh, Lawn of uh, Tyrone. Sean Cabinet for Tyrone again. Showing a lot of power, a tremendous drive across the face of the goal and just gone wide, Brendan Tierney was well placed all right, so I'm sure he knew where it was going. Now, Joe Kernan is animated, Eugene McKenna characteristically a calm figure on the line, but no doubt there's a lot going on in his mind too. I, th I think Joe will obviously be a bit concerned, Armagh giving the ball away very, very easily, and... Uh, Although the game's finally balanced, I think Armagh still should should make more of their possession. They're late by God, woman, to the fresh. There will be at least two minutes. Uh, now, Tyrone winning it in the air again. Two minutes at least. McAnallen, there will be two minutes at least played over, and uh, some emphasis on at least. As Tyrone come attacking again. Good work in the Armagh defence. Covering, blocking, marking, supporting, and McGinney driving the ball out. Now, Brian Drew goes back to challenge. 
A man needed to be space on this side of the field. Or a point from John McEntee. They've got the point. You couldn't really say it was ambitious because he's a very experienced player and he's got many a good point like that. But it comes at a beautiful time for Armagh as we kick into the 30-50. Yeah, grip there from Armagh. Paddy McKeever does very, very strong sterling work and gives it to John Mack on his favourite left foot and he sweeps it straight, straightly over the bar. Two minutes uh, of time to be added on. It's Armagh leading by one. As Kieran Hughes, a good substitute, has got right into the game, comes forward. Has James Marsden in support. Good layoff by him to uh, his right. Opened up the field to John McEntee. Now it'll be harder to try for a point from there, instead he opts for the pass. Good work by John McEntee, good skill. Stephen MacDonald, off his left, but he's pulled it wide on the near side. Stephen MacDonald just couldn't find the room there, couldn't get away from the tackles to aim for the bar post. caught in the middle of the field by John Toll. Won his free as well and won it well. Kieran McGinney gets on with the play. Trying to open up this uh, Tyrone full back line. And it's the uh, full forward Ronan Clark from the Pierce Old Club. And he's won a free. And again, just as John McEntee put over a point a minute ago at a very good time. What a good time this is for Armagh to get a point now as we uh, go into a minute and a half of time added on. And it's easier now and there have to be more discipline in the Tyrone defence. Yeah, Tyrone Tyro will give away a lot of silly free kicks there. I mean, Chris Lawn had no complaints there. He brought Ronan Clark down, and uh, this is making it easier for Oshie. Now, what a splendid uh, camera shot that is. There are Jacksonis on Big Match Day in Ulster and uh, Oshie McConville. Uh, a man who has given a lot of pleasure to football supporters down through the years at club and county level is doing it today and doing it in style with county as he puts over another point. Now it's Armagh by two. We'll soon have the half-time whistle, but not yet, as uh, Paul McGrain wins it in the middle of the field for Armagh. Paddy McKeever, he's had a good first half, he's been very happy with himself. In support is Kieran Hughes, but he's switched sides, good ball in. To John McEntee, goes for the goal! John McEntee the score! What a move here by our man, John McEntee on his left foot, nice and low, Daisy cutter, but the goalkeeper the wrong way, great goal for our man. And what a great time. Well, the goalkeeper does nothing wrong here. It's a beautiful, sweetly stuck shot by John McEntee. His twin brother, Tony, couldn't play because of injury. But he won't mind now, because John is flying the McEntee flag and flying it with pride. And as we go in at halftime, the big question is, Peter Canavan, will we see him in the second half? Or when will we see him in the second half? At halftime... Port Neve here here knocking Clunosh. The score is Armagh, one goal and eight points. Tyrone, six points. What a second half we have to look forward to. Yes, it's amazing, isn't it, how things can change in the matter of just a few seconds in that game. Tyrone playing so well for so much of that first half, but Armagh obviously really taken over at this stage. We'll see what happens in the second half after our commercial break. Now, before we go to that break, let me just remind you once again that you will pick the man of the match from this particular game. Armagh against Tyrone, 1550-717-115. If you're ringing from the Republic of Ireland, 74 cents uh, per minute. Those calls cost. And if you're ringing from Northern Ireland, it's 0906 614 18 one eight sixty pence per minute if you're ringing from Northern Ireland. We have analysis of that first half after the break. Also news from Thurles about that Cork and Waterford Monster Hurling Championship match. Some important developments down there. Stay with us for after the break. Young men think they're great drivers. 
therefore drive too fast to cope with the unexpected. Slow down, boys. From the National Safety Council, supported by X Insurance. Before the kickoff, Mamma had already prepared to ragu lasagna sauces, so we could make a lasagna for her with a rich tomato sauce for the meat and a special smooth white sauce over the lasagna. It was easy peasy. Bellissimo. And now for the Mamma test. The new ragu lasagna kit, all you need to make perfect lasagna. At a special introductory price of 25% off. New ragu lasagna kit, simply brilliant lasagna. An incredible discovery. Time travel. An impossible journey. I'm from the past. Why have you traveled through time? Warner Brothers Pictures and DreamWorks Pictures take you on the most extraordinary adventure of all time. The Time Machine in cinemas May 31st. Something very special. So delicious. Whiskers complete. The only dry cat food with tasty nuggets. Crunchy outside, so tasty inside. All the goodness you would expect from Whiskers. Whiskers complete with unique tasty nuggets. Crunchy outside, tasty inside. Listen up lads, I think we're on the verge of creating something beautiful. But we're still missing a few key elements. That's why we need to go to Atlantic Home Care. They've huge savings for the home, plus loads of ideas to tackle the garden. Let's show some pride in your own patch. Come on, lads! Atlantic Home Care, your home inside and out. Don't miss Monday's 50 Cent Irish Mirror. Inside you'll find this fabulous free 56-page full-color magazine on Ireland's chances of World Cup glory in Japan. It's the only guide you'll need, and it's free. Only in Monday's 50 Cent Irish Mirror. The Irish Mirror. The last word in football. The last word in sport. Would you like to try some of our new spread? Oh, thank you. Only mm. half mm. the fat of oatmeal butter. Mm. Yeah, it's suitable for vegetarians, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Me oh, again. Hi. But I'm such a pig. <laughs> oh, you probably missed your breakfast, did you? Mm, um, yeah. <laughs> and it spreads so easily. It's lovely on the brown bread. And the white bread is not nice. actually. Mm. A special. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. No, it's not okay, That's you're grand. Good. As I was saying, special corn of the shape spread. Did they make it too tasty? <laughs> Welcome back again to the Sunday game. Just a reminder once again that you picked the man of the match from this game. There's also a prize uh, in it for you if your name comes out from the computer of all the phone calls that we get. Uh, that will be announced in our later programme, of course, tonight at half nine. 15 57 17 115 from the Republic. 0906 614 1818. If you're calling from Northern Ireland and those phone lines will be open until 8 o'clock this evening. Plenty of time for you to make your choice and get through to us. Now, our email address here on the Sunday game is sundaygame at rte.ie. If you want to contact us and make any comments about today's matches or any other aspect of GEA, uh, again, for tonight's programme, that's our uh, web mail uh, or our website there as well for you on screen. Now, I have absolutely no doubt that one of the issues tonight that will be discussed in the Sunday game and become a, a very talked about issue is the news from Thurlis that the Waterford team refused to allow any of their players, we are told, to take a drug testing sample after today's match. Um, the Waterford County Board refused to let their players uh, be involved in that, went onto the team bus and left Thurlis. So obviously that has huge implications. Uh, Tommy Lyons was just getting the bones of this uh, at the moment, but as a manager, as a Dublin manager, what's your reaction to that? It's, it's, it's a very unusual development because uh, whether we like it or not, the, drug, the drugs um, taking is, is part of, of law. It's passed by, it's passed by, by, by um, Central Council. So there is a lot of disquiet out there, though. I mean, mm -hmm. the facts are, are the facts. There is a huge disquiet out there about the whole drug testing regime. Some of it is ignorance. Some of it is lack of understanding. Um, but there certainly aren't facilities in any of the GA grounds for private drug testing for fellas to be brought away privately. There, there certainly is a huge 
huge, a huge animosity towards the whole thing is that's been foisted in on everybody without really people sitting down and working it all out. Mm. Certainly, you'd have to ask the question: How do limpsets and these sort of things ban you from playing Gaelic sure. football? Yeah. Gaelic football is a team sport; it's not an individual pursuit. Individual pursuit sports, you can see where the benefit is for going uh, and taking mm -hmm. performance enhancing product. I'm not saying there isn't people in the GA that haven't done it or aren't doing it. Maybe there is. Yeah. I haven't seen it in all my time involved. But I think it's, it is an issue that, that, that the GA and the Sports Council have to get sorted out because well, it is causing awful confusion out there. Clearly, Tommy Lyons is going to come to a head as a result of this news here today. Uh, more about that, obviously, later on through the evening. Now, let's come back to this match between Armagh and Tyrone. John McIntyre Gold, just before half time, we're talking about that column work, and this is put the cat amongst the pigeons. Yes, and I suppose uh, Tyrone will go in very unhappy because for a large part of that half they more or less dominated the game. They took control of the middle of the pitch. But this was a great move. Paddy McKeever started, it was carried on, and Kieran Hughes would come on as a sub. And John McIntyre, when he gets it, he has a lot of work to do, but he wrong foots Peter Ward in the Tyrone goals with a great shot. The most unusual scoring pattern has emerged here because uh, what has happened is Armagh opened up with three points, then Tyrone got six points yeah. in a row and now Armagh have come back and scored 1-5 and that is the most important score obviously because Armagh with their backs to the wall haven't been playing well and have now gone in 5 points up. Yeah and we've also saw there apart from getting the goal we saw an Armagh player standing inside unmarked and this has been a pattern Roland Clark got through, got a point earlier on in the game, could have been a goal too. Yeah, it, it, Armagh are, are playing the, ver the long ball very well, they're, mm. they're, they're turning, the only way both teams are playing zone defence and the only way you can beat zone defence is, is, is real pace or the long ball. That move was real pace. You know, the ball transferred very Could've quickly. Could have just knocked that ball down there, had a goal. It shouldn't have caught it at all, maybe, yeah. if it was going for goal. But still, early in the game, they were t that put them three points up. It was probably the right decision. But zone defences are the norm here. Both teams are playing zone yeah. defence. There's no man marking. Yeah. So it's kind of, it seems to be very loose out there. A lot and of people getting balls yeah. without being tackled. And yet again, we saw Jeremy Marsden in a similar situation for Armagh with another goal chance that was a point. Yeah, well, for me today, the, the, the winning of the game for Armagh had to come from a better performance to from Jeremy Marsden because last Sunday he didn't perform and he left all the work up front to Oisin McConville. This time he gets inside, definitely a great chance if he had to step inside his man, puts it over the bar again. But you know the easiest thing. Point well under pressure, yes, the you. easiest yeah. thing in the world to get scores from Gaelic football, if you have a good target man, is let the ball in long on a one-on-one -on -one situation, yeah. and he had a great chance of a goal. That ball bypassed four Tyrone players who were ready to play zone defence. Yes, and there was only one man inside, and took four men out of the game. Well, yeah, well, what's okay. happening there is every, each team is playing seven backs, mm. so they're a man short right, up front. front. So there's a bit mm. of a problem if they kick aimlessly up front. They must kick across this mm. sort of line of defenders, which is probably standing 35 or 40 metres outside. So the, the right way for a team is to get a man right in on the edge of the square and let them stay in there, at least then to have a real target man. OK, gentlemen, Harma leading then by 186 points at half-time. The second half coming up after this commercial break. Darling. Go on. It's coming in tomorrow, Mummy. Bye. Washing whites every day can be a challenge when you're worried about sensitive skin. Aerial Mom Bio keeps whites championship white for longer, and it's dermatologically tested. You know what it is tomorrow, Mummy? What? That's a day. Championship whites from a non-bio. Aerial, that's another load off your mind. All hair contains around 10% water. Water that's essential to keeping it beautiful. Now, Dove have made a completely new moisturizing shampoo. It moisturizes hair deep inside and keeps it bouncy and softer than ever. New Dove Shampoo for unbeatable moisturization. Now. 
It's a fact that women are better at coping with doing two things at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To make sure your pad can cope as well as you can, Always Ultra now protects you in two ways. They have even longer flexible wings and a special Optum Absorb core that quickly draws liquid inside, safely locking it away. So now you're doubly protected, you can get on with being doubly brilliant. Always talking your body's language. Jack Spratz cleaned up his act, went jogging and got a bit leaner. Thanks to female persistence and a little flora assistance, <laughs> his wife's a damn sight keener. Look, it's grand. You're fine. There goes your daddy. Give him a big wave. There are simpler steps to life protection for you and your family. Dave? Oh my god, Dave! Call your broker or 1890-329-229 about life steps. Life protection from friends first. Heineken Green Energy presents Live by the Lee, The Frames, The Legendary Van Morrison, De La Soul, and for the first time ever in Cork, Brian Ferry. New Everybody from Yoplait contains the probiotic LGG, but unlike other daily drinks, it also contains 15 of the essential vitamins and minerals that benefit everything from your hair to your heart to your energy levels. No other daily yogurt drink can offer this much. For a healthy take on life, have an everybody every day. Jacob's Fig Roll Bars for a convenient energy boost any time of the day. Now available in a new six pack. Welcome back again to the programme. Now, just a final reminder before we go back to the second half of our Matt and Tyrone about our Man of the Match uh, phone lines, 1557-17115 from the Republic and 0906-614-1818 if you're calling from Northern Ireland to pick the Man of the Match from our Matt and Tyrone. The phone lines are open until 8 o'clock this evening. And also a reminder that the score at half-time was our Matt 1-8, Tyrone 6 points as we rejoin Ger Houlihan and Jim Carney. So away we go for the second half. Tyrone have made two changes and remember now of course you can be on five substitutes so if the team senses that they, they need something special there as well to bring on a couple for the second half. Declan McCrossan and Pascal Canavan are in for Tyrone. Kieran uh, Gourley and Richard Thornton the men off. Ama attacking. Stephen McDonald across the face of the goal though and well wide. Now, Pascal Canavan uh, in, uh, no sign of Peter yet, perhaps we'll see him later on, but we just don't know the extent of the knock that he took last Sunday. Now, the sun continues to shine brilliantly uh, over Clonus. And the big crowd, no doubt, will soon get into full voice again as Brian White gives Kevin Hughes a free for Tyrone. They trail by five points, 11 to six. First point chance of the second half for Tyrone and Stephen O'Neill and he flashes a superb point there off his left again, Stephen O'Neill. He got a couple of good frees in the second half, all right. They just need, I suspect now, Tyrone, a little bit more from Stephen from play. Yeah, Stephen O'Neill, a great, great talent, but he needs to get the ball early. Given early from a short, quick free kick and over the bar on his favourite left foot. Brendan Tierney's view upfield in uh, Park Neve of Tiernock. Now Tyrone finding a bit of space again. Pascal Canavan, very experienced substitute. Towards Stephen O'Neill, this time off his right and left the right. O'Neill is delivering now for Tyrone. They've waited a week for this and they're getting it. Yes, but Pascal Canavan gives a short ball. Uh, Justin McNulty's far, far too slack on Stephen O'Neill. He turns on his right foot and delightful point. Well, one of the great skills in Gaelic football is to be equally adept, adept at taking left or right. All the top players can do it, and Stephen O'Neill is one of them. 
tremendous uh, voice now uh, in the crowd at uh, Jonas as uh, Kieran McGinney, one of the uh, uh, Aidan O'Rourke rather goes down for Grandma and loses it Kieran McGinney, one of the stars of the first half Grandma will need him now to uh, continue to lead them as he led them in the first half and as he led them last night Declan McCrossan was a very effective substitute for the second half last week. Tyrone will be hoping he'll do the same this week. He's in for Kieran Gourley. Well, space at a premium there, and the ball has gone out, and the uh, linesman, uh, there was a little bit of uncertainty there for the moment. Uh, Eugene McKenna was in no doubt, though, that it was a Tyrone ball. Well, the uh, five-point interval deficit has been cut now by Tyrone to uh, a more manageable three. But once again, McGinney goes up the field for Elmer. What a thrilling sight. Now the costly ball just didn't quite work. Cut out by Philip Jordan to Declan McCrossan, who loves to go forward. So too does Jordan. Brian Robson had a very good first half, made a couple of very good catches and blocks and clearances. Nicely held by John Toll. He did some very good things in the first half. From the key to club and armor. Now, Tyrone closing down their men quite well in the uh, first uh, five minutes of this uh, first half. And there you see just how uh, the sun is shining here in Jones today. What a lovely afternoon it is for football. Brian Dewar to come away with it for Tyrone. Men in support. One of them is Kevin Hughes, who came out the field to such good effect in the first half. Now Hughes playing it down to top of the right, but it's running away from uh, Sean, uh, from Stephen O'Neill down there. He's now being marked uh, by Ender McNulty. Kieran McGinney, hard challenge from Hughes. McGinney held his ground well, two hands on the ball. One is free, won it well. McGinney's having a terrific game in this match. He's all over the place, but a lot of work done by John Toll off the ball. Here in McGinney's short free. Was Paul McGrain. Not uh, it didn't work out for our man, but it, it can still. But Tyrone win it back. And then a good challenge went in. Amar playing hard football, but good football. Driven by John Toll. Brian Robinson for Tyrone. To Colin Holmes. Working hard in support like any good midfielder. But he got a shoulder. And it's uh, won back by our man. Fancy Bellew. Short to uh, Kieran McGinney. Did he overcarry? Well, he just got it away in time. Falling to Oshin McConville. Space had a premium for Oshin today. That's not surprising after the uh, mark he made in the game the last day. John Toll drives it in. Jerome coming strong out of defence again. Good support play. It was Conor Gormley who won that one. He had a good first half. To Jared Calvin. There's a lot of room up the left. Kevin Hughes called for that pass. He put his hand up. And he was spotted. Now Hughes in a lot of room. One or two men going in. Hughes tries for the point. It's a great effort by Hughes. It's all the way over the bar. Tremendous play by the big young man. Kevin Hughes. Started at full forward, now at midfield, and Tyrone are getting right back into it in this second half. Yes, this man has had a great burn in both games. I thought he was a pick of the Tyrone forward line last week. Unfortunately, he was taken off, but today he's having a really good game. He's obviously stood into the mantle of Peter Canavan. The only one thing in his mind, put the ball over the bar, and that's what he did. And to Tyrone have now cut the deficit. A magnificent contest between two tough cards good footballing teams play speed from end to end both sets of defences doing well 1-8 to 9 points just 2 in it Chris Dawn for Tyrone every score hard earned but nobody's complaining Philip Jordan for Tyrone to play a shot to Colin Holmes the midfielder who has been supporting his defence all day very good ball through to that man Kevin Hughes 
In terms of effectiveness, he is to Tyrone now, what McGinley is to a man. There they are together, fighting for the ball. And then Sierra Cadman plays it in short. It's gone out for a 45, though Brendan Tierney got it into his hands. It's a 45, but referee Brian White will go in and see what happened here. As a challenge went in on Brendan Tierney, you're OK, there's nothing wrong with you. Get up and get on with it, it's Brian White's method. Good, sensible refereeing again, but Brendan Tierney, I suspect, uh, may just have a smile on his face all the same. He's a wily old fox. Oh, wily old fox indeed. Uh, but the ball was definitely a 50, and uh, a, a potential score here for Tyrone. Fancy Bellew versus Sean Kavner, the young man who started the last day. Stephen O'Neill to kick the 45. Well, Stephen O'Neill, a young man uh, who uh, carried the hopes of Tyrone uh, on his shoulders into this All-Ireland Championship for all the talk about the influence and the experience of Peter Canavan. They were looking to O'Neill as well, the altar. Has had a very good game so far, except he pulls that one to the right and wide, and he'll be disappointed, and it seems here that he just didn't put the power into that one. Yeah, but uh, Peter had been kicking the 50s the last day, and obviously Stephen O'Neill is probably just as, as deputy in that term, but... Uh, Difficult scores, 45 in these conditions. A lot of pressure on. Brendan Tierney's kick out then. Eight minutes gone in the second half. I'm uh, by two. Paul McGrain, Paul McGrain won that one. Took it back. Tries to open up the Tyrone defence. Dearmish Marston trying to get into the game, Dearmish Marston, but close marking. And crossing there to get in a second challenge, it's a free to Armagh. Marston wants to get on with it, but perhaps he'd better just calm it down for a second and consider the options. I think we've got a free kick taker of Paddy McKeever's quality today. You leave everything down and let him kick them. And just as uh, Jared Hulahan says that, he's proved right because Paul McGrain has uh, left it to uh, Paddy McKeever three excellent kicks in the first half but perhaps a little bit more pressure now as we go into the second half let's see what Paddy McKeever can do with that one. swings it in oh that's great football that's great free kicking by Paddy McKeever pressure or no pressure McKeever was up to it an absolutely terrific free kick from, from Paddy McKeever the wind's freshening a wee bit here in Clonus and obviously it's more difficult to score uh, from that tight angle. John McEntee's goal for Armagh separates the sides ten minutes into the second half. Now a little push there on uh, Cormac McAnallan just before the ball arrived and again as he did all through the first half, Brian White beautifully positioned to uh, spot what was going on. It was right beside him. Cormac McAnally switching it to the right towards Sean Kavner. There were two Amar men there, one of them uh, Ender McNulty. Uh, Stephen O'Neill rather. Stephen O'Neill going in field and winning a free. Now the Amar defence I would uh, think probably less happy maybe about uh, that free but uh, Brian White was right there to give it and uh, a lot of ball being played into Stephen O'Neill's corner now and this is uh, something that Tyrone have obviously thought a lot about Joe. Yes yeah, Stephen O'Neill is obviously going to be the focus of, of all their attacks now he's playing the ball in nice and early and obviously he's getting the just rewards. Six points now for Stephen O'Neill, three in each half. That's a tremendous return in a tight, hard championship match. I think Jim Arma may be concerned about the full four line at the minute. A lot of ball going in, but they're not winning anything. And it's noticeable to see Barry Duffy warming up. And you could see a possible change within the next five or ten minutes. So that's the uh, situation as read by Jared Hulham, former outstanding uh, forward for Arma for many years. And uh, Amal just now needing an injection up front because Tyrone have really come back into it and uh, retained their composure and uh, clearly weren't two down at half-time despite conceding a goal. Well, pressure again uh, is working for Tyrone and uh, Brian White uh, patiently explaining there as to why he gave that free.
Now from a difficult angle across the face of the goal, that wasn't really ever on for a point. But at least uh, Tyrone had the satisfaction of keeping up the attack. Gerard Cavlin, uh, not quite the force perhaps in the two championship matches that he was in the league. But again, close marking in fairness by the Armada defense. Yeah, I think Tyrone expected a lot from Gerard Cavlin coming into the championship. He had a great national league, but didn't play well last week and he's moved to the corner now and it's, not, it's an unusual position for him. Well, t uh, 12 minutes into uh, this second half, and uh, while we uh, watch Kieran uh, McGinney uh, get a little bit of treatment, at least we can be reassured that he's all right and that he's uh, taking his place. Any thoughts, Chair, on when we might see Peter Canavan or it? I, I, would, I would say Tyrone are fairly happy now. They've come back in. They've obviously got over the five-point deficit and come back into the game, and I think they'll lead Peter to as late as possible. 35-minute halves, of course, now, and in the heat, literally, of championship football like this, uh, there's a long, long way to go. And a lot of hard work still, as Pascal Canavan drops that ball in again towards O'Neill's corner. Sean Kavner has uh, run free to, to pick up the pieces. O'Neill's called for the pass, Kavner goes right. Now he may just have to go back. But the, the uh, direct route again is picked up, and it's gone in, and over the bar. Oh, great work by uh, Kavner in the approach play there, and uh, Cormac McAnadam coming through from midfield. Yeah, uh, Sean, Sean Kavner is such a strong boy. Looks up, gives a great ball to Cormac and Al on Texas Point sensibly. And at his age, a minor last year, there had to be the mark of a confidence young man there too. That's right, he, he, two tremendous players. A point in at influence. Tyrone on top in the early stages of the second half. Ahmad to get a free to settle down their team. None better at setting down a team than Kieran McGinney to switch the direction of the attack towards the top of the left. Now this is uh, young uh, Ronan Clark. Uh, close attention by Chris Lone, and again you'll notice that the Tyrone man resisted the temptation to go in too hard uh, where he might concede a foul, but Ahmad, good ball in. Now a chance of a fisted point perhaps, or will he go for a goal? Oh, saved by Peter Ward! It was a goal the Armand man was thinking about, and uh, now they put it wide. It might have been a goal, a point would have been consolation. In the end, it was neither. Oh, anxiety there in the Tyrone defence, but their composure was uh, admirable. They stuck to their task, however, there were two scoring chances there for Armand. You just wonder how significant this will be. Yeah, the, this, this is the point going for Ian work. The chance are really before that, but Combo. Had a chance to punch it over the bar and didn't. Um, well, John McIntyre is uh, so happy to go in at half time, having got uh, such a good goal, and he kicked a good point too. But now uh, that one has gone wide. So inside a minute, as we go over the 15th minute of the second half, uh, Amma. Uh, uh, miss out on the possibility of a goal or a point and then a point and uh, we can tell you now that Barry Duffy from the Kalevi club will shortly come into the action for our match and they've got to do something up front to break free of the tight marking to own backs the Ahri or Ernard Walker ever a shock to you Barry Duffy Possessing ever a guard here, Ronan Clark. Number so, as we thought, Barry Duffy 14. is coming into the uh, Amma full Clark. forward line now, but I think there might be a little bit of surprise, Ger Hulhan, that it's Ronan Clark that's giving way because he's worked hard in there. Yeah, Ronan's done very, very well, but he hasn't got much ball. I mean, uh, I think they had to make changes in the full forward line, and I would expect to, to bombard the throne attack, throne defence with their uh, aerial attacks. So, here come Amma again. First touch for uh, Barry Duffy. Back to uh, Stephen McDonald, who puts it over the bar, and that's just what her man needs, but it's, uh, it is the 16th minute of the second half. And even though time is going by, by, the point is welcome, and it's come from Stephen McDonald, who has uh, really found it hard to get into the action in this second half, but that's much more likely from him. Conor Gormley, playing well for Tyrone. 
beside uh, Chris Dorn and Brian Robinson. The three of them together comprising an excellent fullback there. Robinson, the man in possession. Well, five to run and hand the ball there. That's a sign of how confident and how supportive of each other that they are. Brian Duhart to, to go down the right wing, as he's done a hundred times and a hundred times more for Tyrone. Well, it was Stephen O'Neill, and good work there by Andy McNulty to shepherd that ball wide. Well, again, we see Oshin McConville coming in. Just for a second, he may have been thinking about punching it over the bar, but again, it was good work by Chris Lawn in particular. Yeah, I think his intention definitely was to punch it over the bar, isn't it? And he sort of got uh, tripped or picked up and he was falling and he decided to kick it. And a great save by Peter Ward. Knocked down by uh, John Toll and uh, Armagh come away with it. Now again, it's a little tight there, it still is. Oh, John McIntyre did so well to keep that ball in. He was over the line himself, but the ball was in. So that's all right then. As John Toll comes forward, plays a nice ball into Stephen McDonald. Is there a second point for Stephen McDonald in the top? Yes! Good play by McDonald. Perhaps taking some inspiration from the fact that the man who's come in, Barry Duffy, is a club mate. Yeah, no doubt, Steve McDonald badly needed his first point. And now his confidence is high. Great ball from John Toll. Steve McDonald after scoring his first point. It makes his second one. So, for all of Tyrone's excellent work in the second half, there's a goal between them again, and that goal is for Arma. For Cormac McAnally, picked up a good position just inside the 45. There was a man calling for the pass. The pass came. Now, is there a trip going in there? No. Not at first, but there is now, and Brian Duhur, the man fouled. And again, Brian White right there to make the decision. Armagh should not be giving away needless free Dirk, kicks. No Brian Duhur is close, we have to work harder. Dirk, Keep open them out. All exit. Now Stephen O'Neill puts that ball over the bar. It's a magnificent seven now for uh, Stephen O'Neill. Three in the first half, three in the second half, two from play, two from freeze. Good work by him. He's now the key man in the Tyrone defence, in the Tyrone attack. The man they're looking to to get the score. So Brendan Tierney kicks out uh, with it back to a two-point game for Amar. Great bit of catching there in the middle of the field. Great work by Paul McGrain. With a bit of support from uh, Nagini and the substitute, Kieran Hughes, uh, who has played some good football. Now down towards top of the left, oh, great running by Brian Robinson again. What a fine match he's played. And again, no more than John McIntyre a minute ago, uh, out over the line, but made sure the ball stayed in. That was the key. Declan McCrossan for Tyrone. Hasn't really got into the game yet since he came on for the second half. But that's a good ball towards Stephen O'Neill. Now, he's been very testing for Ender McNulty. And then across the face of the goal, and wide to McNulty's and Armagh's relief. Ger Hullen, we know that Peter Canavan is warming up, so Tyrone sense that they can't wait any longer, clearly. No, I think they have to bring Peter in. Obviously, listen to the crowd's reaction. I think it'll be a massive, massive mental lift here when Peter Canavan is introduced to this Tyrone team. 20 minutes gone in the second half, which means there's 15 to go. Two Tyrone men to come in. Peter probably won't be the first to come in. But uh, he has taken off his track suit top. So Brian McGuigan will be a first from a famous football family in our boat. And uh, Jared Cavlin is the man to make way. He went from left foot forward to top of the left. And now Brian McGuigan to come in. Fourteen minutes to go. Great bit of catching again in the middle of the field, as uh, we've seen a lot of from uh, Amas of Paris. Uh, Kieran Hughes uh, put that ball forward towards the uh, Diarmuid Marsden. Uh, John Toll it was who made the catch. Marsden, oh, good ball by him. Now we're seeing the skill of Marsden, and a good ball forward. Now again, the Tyrone defence are there in numbers, and um, uh, fouls the ball. And again, I think you'll have to say it's your outstanding work by the Tyrone back. Great work with Tyrone defence, but uh, Armagh have a tendency when they get in that close to overplay the ball. 
Well, overplaying the ball at this level uh, runs uh, the risk of a good player coming in and taking it from you, and that's what we've seen many times today. Fancy Bellew from uh, Cross McLean, the club of uh, manager uh, Joe Kernan, uh, is the latest to be spoken to and to get a yellow card. We had four in the first half, and now we have a fifth as Tyrone come on the attack. But again, for all their good work in the second half, they do trail it, 111 to 12 points, are now the leaders. But uh, they've uh, conceded a free here, that man is Ender McNulty, and no doubt about it, uh, Jared Hulahan, but Ender McNulty does have his hands full. Yeah, he has his full, hands full. Stephen O'Leary's looking for every ball, they're moving it quickly to him, and Ender's it all to do. Stephen O'Neill there, going for his eighth point of the game, but it's swinging away, that's not coming in, it's gone wide, and that goes down as a miss. That was kickable, even though there's a tricky little win now, but by his standards, that was a miss. Colin Holmes, the Tyrone number nine, waiting for the kick out, and uh, there's been some great clashes in the middle of the field today under that dropping ball. Kieran Hughes for Armagh, two hands on, on the ball, eyes on the ball, and then through the tackle to Paul McGrain, but it's just run away from him. Now again, we see the pressure that's being exerted. Colin Holmes won that ball for Tyrone. Uh, it should be an Armagh ball, despite the fact that Kevin Hughes just pleaded for a second for it, but he knew. Colin Holmes of uh, Tyrone uh, requires a little bit of attention. Uh, he's worked hard, Colin Holmes, not so much in a conventional midfield role, but uh, in supporting his halfback. Man. Yeah, the midfield's been a crucial sector today. I'm fairly happy with the way Armagh have played right now. They've won a lot of ball. I've been particularly delighted with the work of John Toll. who's worked tirelessly in defence and in attack. And indeed, it's been a day for hard work, and uh, nobody really has shirked his duty, and certainly nobody can. In the next uh, 11 minutes that we have in this game with the Armagh, the leaders, 14 points to 12, 111 to 12 points. Now, was it Conor Gormley who knocked that ball away? Yes, it was. So it's an Armagh ball. Conor Gormley's also played very well here today. Paul McGrain to uh, leave it to Kieran Hughes of Armagh. And Declan McCrossan to win it for Tyrone. But well, it's a long way from down there to the other end of the field to get Tyrone into an attacking position. But one man who can devour the ground is McCrossan. Instead, he opts for a pass. Now, support needed here. Brian McGuigan, in as a substitute, wins the free. To Colin Holmes. Brian Dewar is to his right as he goes cross halfway. Needs a bit of help here, Holmes. Or will he go for his own score? Well, it was a little bit ambitious and perhaps a little bit too ambitious. But I have to say, Ger Hulahan, just watching that move, that Brian Doher, unusual for him, didn't go forward to take the pass. Yeah, surprising some of the throw. They seem to pull themselves right out, and then they're going to happy to shoot from distance. And Colin Holmes certainly didn't want to take the shot, but they had no option. Ten minutes to go in Clonus. I'm out by two. And I'm now working so hard again. Kieran Hughes has got onto a lot of ball. And that, after all, is the uh, role a good sub must play. But uh, as we say that, he gives the ball away under pressure, so it's a sideline ball to Tyrone. Ryan McMenamin, a little quieter today than he was the last day when he went forward for two good points. To Brian McGuigan, trying to get into a scoring position. Now, to give a pass to Brian Doher. Now, Doher, again, a little bit ambitious, but we'll see where it drops. Now, a good little ball laid back there, but good work by the Armada defence, if they don't foul. And it's a free out. Great work by the defence again. And McQueen knew it. And he said, that's the stuff to the men around him. And they get on quickly, even though it's uh, Armada who lead. No slowing the game down. But perhaps they should, because they've given it away to Ryan McManaman, over from the right to the left. But there isn't really a score on from there, so he's got to look for a bit of help. He finds the help all right, in and high, and across and over the bar, and that's a magnificent score by Declan McCrossan, a man who's always been there, liable to go up the field and kick a point. It wasn't an easy kick, but he was up to it. 
Yeah, every year he crops up this man, Declan McCross, against Armagh. Scores points from impossible angles. A sweetly struck left foot shot from the outside of his boot. Tremendous oh, score. Great skill by Declan McCrossin. That was a banana type shot there by McCrossin. It was beautifully delivered with a perfect trajectory. What a point. Good catching by uh, Pascal Canavan. Good ball too. Under pressure, Stephen O'Neill. It's a hard challenge there. He plays a good ball out. Now the Armagh the Arma backs come around their men again. Tyrone, another point. It's on and they've got it by Brian McGuigan. Well, the substitutes on both teams are playing well. Yes, Kevin Cusley has a lovely ball out. Brian McGuigan, like his far, never wants to shirk an opportunity. Sticks the ball over the bar. Max Lavell and the crowd coming to life. And those of a certain age will know just how good Frank McGuigan of our ball was. Well, it's a pity now that the momentum of the game has just uh, been halted because uh, it's level pegging in Stonis and the game is at the uh, boiling point and we mean that in the best and most exciting sense as Aidan O'Rourke gets up and gets on with it and it's a day for getting up and getting on with it. It's a wonderful match here in Stonis now of Ulster Championship football. They finished level the last day. They're level now with seven minutes to go. Now Aidan O'Rourke has worked hard for Amar to get good ball forward in this match. To Stephen McDonald, a couple of great scores from him in the second half. To loop around and collect the pass. To set something up on that far side of the field for Oshin McConville, who's marked very, very uh, tight and well in this game. Back to Paul McGrain. Amar have to go out the field, they won't mind that if a score comes. But it's swinging in and swinging wide. Good work again by the Tyrone back, who are performing heroic in this game. Yes, yeah, Armagh at this stage seem to be getting the scores a lot harder than Tyrone. They're play Tyrone are playing a lot of drag ball into Stephen O'Leal and getting the free kicks and working off it. And stamina and fitness uh, not an issue here, either of them for either side. And they're giving it a tremendous effort. John Toad playing so well for Armagh. Good ball in. Well, one in front of the goal. Well given to. Is there a goal here? Yes! Barry Duffy the scorer. On a day when subs are doing their stuff. None more so than Barry Duffy. So his chance took it. Paul McGrain for Armagh. Down towards top of the right, but that's uh, an easy, a relatively easy one for uh, Chris Dorn to get them across. And um, Tyrone have got to do it all over again, but they did a week ago. Can they do it again? They have to, or it's Armagh's day. Good play to Ushie McConville to make a run. Such a skillful player. He's one of three. A free to Amar, won by Oshie McConville, they look to him, but here's the goal. Yes, Oshie McConville to Barry Duffy. And off the right side of it, outside of his right foot, slips it past Peter Ward. A great goal, and more importantly, great timing from Barry Duffy. Philip Lohan, 21, and Anna de Verapur, Dave Dermot Martin of our mad team. Yeah. 21 for 15. So, a chance for Paddy McKeever to kick over another point. He hasn't uh, failed Armagh yet today. I can tell you that Dermot Marsden is off the field, which uh, may surprise some people. But it's Paddy McKeever now who is uh, raising the Armagh flags all around Park Sheeran against Lunos. What a thrilling, colourful scene it is. Armagh flying high now. Sad person for Marsden, who just could not read his magic spells today. But McKeever is from left-footed freeze for Armagh. 
Five from five from Paddy McKeever, a great return. Not one of them but easy. McAnallan and it's clear now that uh, Peter Canavan's injury must be keeping out of the keeping him out of the action because the Tyrone haven't produced him yet. And with just three minutes to go. Down to top of the left again. And Ma have played a lot of ball into this corner. Oshin is uh, held around the, the ankles there by Conor Gormley who protested his uh, innocence. Or at least uh, an Ahmad defender did, but uh, there was no doubt in Brian uh, White's mind, the referee, in giving that free to uh, Oshin McConville. John Toll in the middle of the field. He's done a lot of good work today. Dangerous ball in towards uh, Duffy. Knocked down to Kevin Hughes, but he's had to come back a long way to help out to McCrossan. Good uh, challenge going in on McCrossan, and he's won a free, but he's checked. His momentum is checked. That's the key. That's what uh, will leave our mass satisfied. To Brian McGuigan. He got a good point on his introduction. Now there's a dangerous ball going in, and it's, it's gone wide. It's gone wide. Well, McGuigan did so well to get this ball in, but uh, the defence stood firm when it fell. Yeah, but this is the ball that undone Armagh last week. The high ball in, Sean Cabin on the edge of the square. Very, very unfortunate. Flicks it, but just wide. Benny Taney had to cover, though. Well, it doesn't look now as if uh, Peter the Great will be sprung today, but of course, with the system yeah, now, right. uh, the qualifiers, the so-called back door, there will be there another will be day for Peter Canavan and two. Time. At least two minutes. A minute to go, plus three, as Kieran McGinney, who had a wonderful first half, plays a great ball down the line to Stephen McDonald. McDonald looking for the point, in over the ball, that's glorious by, by our man and by Stephen McDonald. But if you cast your thoughts back just a, to a few seconds ago, what a ball in it was by that man, Kieran McGinney. McGinney again has been outstanding for our eyes. Lynn, from the start of the match, his first half performance was exceptional, and that ball personified Kier McGinney. Brilliant. Yes, as Chair Hullin said, he did. He did by personal example. We're in the last minute of normal time. 2.13 to 14 points. A trip by uh, John McEntee. Urgency now by Tyrone. Now, is there a way through here as Ryan McMenamin comes forward, shoots and shoots over the bar, put a low trajectory on it, but must have known that he'd have to be satisfied with a point. Yes, a quick ball into Ryan McMenamin. I'm sure he's looking for a goal here. He just uh, tried to hit the crossbar, dip it under, but... Thankfully, it went over the bar for Armagh. Armagh can't afford to sit back on this lead. That's what they did last week. They've got to keep on pushing forward. Now, Armagh finding more space than they did earlier on in the match. Paddy McKeever. So accurate. Unbeatable uh, earlier on. So accurate from Freeze. But... Uh, that he might well feel a wide is as good as a score. Now Declan McCrossan, he's had to be content with the defensive game today, Declan McCrossan, except for one good point that he came up field for. Knocked down by Francie Bellew, just got a hand in there, and that's what cornerbacks are there for, to get a, a palm of a hand or a fist in and knock the ball away. Now, Joe Kernan, uh, a man who kept the faith all week when people were probably saying to him that his team had missed the boat. Now we're one minute and 40 seconds into tie banded on as McGee, uh, the Armagh captain, looks for a bit of space down the top of the right. Brian Robinson, who played so well for Tyrone to get an attack going. A goal is acquired in towards uh, the big man. Pulls on it and pulls on it and puts it over the bar. 
So uh, Sean Kavner, the goal hero last week late in the game, has to be content with the point here. But it does pull it back now to just three points. And Gerald Hulden and Armand will still be worried because uh, we have at least another minute, uh, minute and a half to go. Yes, yeah, so Armand have got to be very, very careful. No, it's all over. all over. It's all over. We've gone over two and a half minutes, it's all over. Brian White has thrown the full-time whistle on a glorious Armad triumph in Cork Tiernock and Clonus. 2.13 to 16 points, a goal in it. Kieran Hughes and Armad Sob who played well. On a day when subs on both sides played well. But on a day two when there was a focus on one sub who we didn't see, Peter Canavan. But no doubt we'd see him on another day. And there's the Amar captain who led his team by outstanding personal example. And whatever about the qualifiers and the second chance, Amar people here in Clonus today, especially Kim McGinney, will know that there's nothing like winning. Now, here is one of the goals, the first by John McEntee, beautifully placed, nothing Jerome Peter War could do about it. And the second goal, Ger Hulhan, the one that really killed off this game as a contest. Yeah, great finish by Duffy. Goalkeeper came out very, very quickly, but Boyd took the bam. That's a great result for Armagh. So, the full-time scorer in Clonus, after a tremendous contest, in which there was championship intensity, in which there were wonderful scores by both sides, off free and from play, off freeze and from play, the final score, Armagh, two goals and 13 points. A gallant Tyrone team, 16 points. Well, what a fine game of football that was. You saw the reaction of Brendan Tierney, the Armagh goalkeeper, at the end of the game. You think they'd win the All-Ireland, but I suppose in beating Tyrone, well, it's very important to Armagh um, uh, to do that. We have analysis with Tommy Lyons and with Colin Baruch after the break. But before we go to that break, let me also remind you, once again, that you pick the man of the match from that game. And you certainly have plenty of choices there, don't you? It's 1557-7115 if you're calling from the Republic. If you're calling from Northern Ireland, it's 0906. 614-1818. Now, while you're writing down those phone line numbers, let me also point out to you that, of course, it was to have been uh, Donegal versus Down, our live match from the Ulster Championship this afternoon. That game, of course, was called off. When you ring on those numbers, it will mention Don Down and Donegal, but just simply for your choice, replace Donegal for Armagh, and if you press the button that says Down, that's for Tyrone. So it's Donegal instead of Armagh, and it is Down and Tyrone. All right. OK, we take a commercial break. The thoughts of the panel after that. Uh-oh. What are the jelly people up to today? Nosy little devils. Now you saw it. We see you. Ew, that'll teach him. Chewing Orbit with Xylitol fights plaque acid, which helps deliver outstanding cavity protection. A smile relaxes all the major facial muscles, setting off an emotional chain reaction that helps you feel good. Or new simple facial wipes that gently cleanse and tone in one go. That'll make you smile too. Can you cook it? Yes, I can. Can you cook it? Yes, I can. Can I cook it? Yes, you can. Schwartz Shots. From tingle to blister, nothing works faster than Zavirax. Zavirax, putting the smile back on your face. Tell you what, I'll give you a fiver. Hellbill 7. Look, the last thing I need is another granny. Six. That's me final offer. Two. See you, Gran. <laughs> Next! There are people out there granny, is it? so yeah. desperate for a Denny sausage, they'd sell their grannies to get them. Fantastic. Dad, when's me Gran coming over? She's just been. No, uh, I mean, you're a Gran. Look, it's grand. You're fine. There goes your daddy. Give him a big wave. There are simpler steps to life protection for you and your family. Dave? Oh, my God, Dave! Call your broker or 1890-329-229 about life steps. Life protection from friends first. 
Travel Limerick to Dublin in comfort from just fifteen euro fifty day return. You're better off on Bus Aaron. There's even better value all this week only at Don Stores. Buy one punnet of new season peaches, get another one free. Torre Langares red and white wine gets six bottles for just 30 euro. And there's over 40% off succulent salmon darns. With lots more super savings in store, Dunce Stores always better value. If you've a room that needs help, you need the great Harry Curry sale. It's now on. The Myra Elite 2, a world of comfort and safety at the touch of a button. See the stylish new Myra Elite 2 instant electric shower at the showrooms of PJ Matthews, Bally Simon, Limerick. Look it up, check it out. The Red Book for what's available in your area. Tosh Young, the business and shopping guide that's used nationwide by thousands. It's guaranteed Irish. Now, just a reminder once again about our uh, phone numbers. If you want to name your man of the match from this game, don't forget that there is a prize in this for you too, if you are one of the names that come out of the computer. And just also while you're writing out those phone lines, let me remind you that when you ring on that, it will actually mention Donegal and Down, which was to have been our live match. If you want to vote for an Armagh player, pick the Donegal option when it offers you that. If you want to vote for a Tyrone player, pick the Down option on the recorded voice over there. And those phone lines are open until 8 o'clock. Sunday game at rte.ie, that's our email address if you want to get through to the programme for later on this evening. And that's also our website there uh, listed under that. So then, hello the, uh, again to the programme. Analysis coming up. But before we have analysis, we have Joe Kernan, the Armagh manager, and his thoughts on their famous win. Certainly, um, I think the game was everything we expected. The uh, end end stuff, uh, we, were in, we were in control, Tyrone took control. Uh, and at the end, I would have settled for a one point win, but three points was nice. What do you have to say about these fellows of yours? Well, uh, they know what I think of them. Uh, it's the rest of the country. I was worrying about this last few weeks, they were writing them off, but uh, they showed a lot of heart and a lot of character, and they have the ability, which is the most important thing. And you think a lot of Tyrone too? Certainly. You know, like the, the way Tyrone have uh, come up through the ranks over this last two or three years and won the minors on the 21s and now the National League, and I have no doubt that we'll probably be seeing Tyrone later on in the year. What was the difference between you today? Well, the difference was that uh, I suppose when our backs were to the wall, we didn't fold, which people have said we've done in the past. Certainly no team does that intentionally, but we changed a few things around. And I think John McIntyre had a magnificent game today at centre-half forward, which, along with a lot of other players, but he held the lane that when we were coming out of defence, we always had somebody to, uh, to aim at, whereas last week we had a problem doing that. Colm O'Rourke, that match ebbed and flowed all through, and particularly in the second half, when Cormac McAnallen got the point that brought the Toronto just one down, I thought they were on their way back. Yeah, well, it's funny, I think that Tyrone were the better football side, and uh, Joe Kernan won't thank me for saying that, or maybe he won't be too unhappy uh, knowing Joe, a, Joe a long time, but Tyrone played the better football, I thought, but the game ebbed and flowed, and when one side was on top, they tended to take, get a lot of scores. And uh, when Tyrone got to within a point with this score from Cormac McAnallen, and again, the Armagh defence were caught a bit flat-footed there. McAnallen probably should have flicked that ball as it came into him there from John Kavanagh, and I think that he could have put it into the net. Instead of that, he catches it and takes his point. But with 20 minutes to go, Tyrone running a point behind, playing the better football, you'd think they would win. And other things seem to be going against Armagh from the point of view that there was a possible penalty that they might have got during that second half and didn't happen for them. Yeah, certainly you, you thought the game was pulling away from Armagh because Tyrone had come at them and, and had got back the, the four-point four deficit and, and looked like they were going to take control of the mm -hmm. game. Armagh were hanging on by their fingernails. But, you know, this is a great chance by, by, by Ushie McConville. Like, he, he took on his man very well. I think, I don't know if this going is, up is or yeah. just going yeah. up, yeah. Um, yeah Ushie McConville was a threat to Tyrone all, all day today. You know, he, he took on his man within the inside. I thought he, he was going yeah, to be lucky not to get a penalty there. Right? I think the referee gave him the advantage, what advantage there was, because he was actually true on goal. Mm. If he put in the net, the referee would have been right. You know, in hindsight, sure. it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. But, uh, you, you, know, had to, you had to be mauled all day to get a free here. You know, <laughs> the, <laughs> in, in fairness, so we, we've heard the new directors from referees about over-carrying and picking the ball off the ground. Still, if a fella's mauled, it's a free, but I couldn't see it there today. Like, there was some of the tackling there was incredible and there was nobody getting a free. Yeah, well, um, I did get a goal. Barry Duffy popped up, one of the subs, to score this one. Yeah, well, there were seven minutes to go. The whole tide seemed to be flowing in favour of Tyrone. 
and then Armagh held their heads and they got one good chance, ball in and again Ocean McConville had a great second half, wins it in front, turns his man and gives it on to Barry Duffy and uh, Armagh made a few very good substitutions and that's a great finish mm. now, Barry Duffy I'm sure will say he meant that but if he did that's as good a strike as we're going to see in Japan over the next few weeks and of course it was the crucial score, Armagh got the goals Tyrone had to win it on points, but nobody would like to meet Tyrone in the qualifier. Sure. They're a serious team still. Yeah, no, they won't. But the point about it is, Tom, uh, Tyrone went into this championship as one of the favourites for the championship and have been beaten by Armagh. Yeah, Galway went in last year as one of the favourites and they got dumped out in the first round. Yeah. I think I think Tyrone are going to have a big play, big part to play in the championship yet. Local rivalry between Armagh and Tyrone would have would have made this game a different type Ashley, of game. Yeah. Both teams would be very different now playing somebody else, and I think I think both these teams will be in the last eight. Yeah, OK, well, that's all for another day. But uh, right now, let me just refer back to the news from Thurles that I was telling you about earlier on. After the Waterford Cork Monster Hurling Championship semi-final, the Waterford refused to provide a drug sample uh, when requested and put their players onto the team bus and left uh, Semple Stadium. Now, we've been talking to PJ Ryan, who's the Waterford County Chairman, and asked him what was the reason for that. No, on a personal basis, you know, we, we fully support the rules and regulations of the Gaelic Athletic Association and of the Sports Council, everybody involved. But uh, uh, players have expressed reservations that they haven't been educated enough on the procedures and they haven't been educated enough on the medication they can and ta cannot take. I'm 100% sure all our players are drug-free. I have no problem the way that they with that. But at the end of the day, uh, players, you know, players have, have a lot of stunt in the association at the moment and uh, the players wishes were abided by and we, we, if they failed to get any players for drug testing. Well done. All right. Thank you. Now the news that we got uh, later on, gentlemen, was that Waterford did provide a sample later on at the hotel, which might have been just outside the rules, Tommy Lyons, but very, very briefly, Colin Rourke was asking Tommy about this before, uh, your reaction to all of this issue. Well, I, I'm quite sure the players have nothing to hide, but, you know, Tommy said earlier there's a lot of animosity among players. and. I, I knew that this was going to happen. There was going to be an explosion on drug testing. Mm. because And people outside might say some players in the GEA have something to hide. I don't think they have anything to hide. But it seems to me that you know, there's a, a, a situation going to arise. The players are being playing hard, doing all of this, and then the drug testers who are being paid to come and take a drug test off them. There's a, yeah. an explosion waiting to happen on that side of it. But yet, you know, players have to abide by the rules of the organisation. And if the drug testing is in place, it must be yes. abided with until a situation is resolved. But the pr lack of privacy in most GEA stadiums must make it very difficult, plus the amount of time that has to be spent there. So I have every sympathy with the players. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for that. Now we have the results of the day in Gaelic Games coming up. If you don't want to see the results, remember your nighttime programme. Coming up a little bit later on, you should just look away for the moment. OK, the results are gone off your screen right now, so it's only left for us to remind you about our nighttime programme uh, once again. Uh, we'll have highlights uh, for you at 9.30 on Network 2 of our man, Tyrone Leash, Offaly, Loudon, Kildare, and, and of course also a look at that Cork versus Waterford hurling match uh, at Thurles, and a fine game of hurling that was too. Final remember about the, uh, reminder about the man of the match, 1550-717-114, that's for Cork and Waterford now, remember, 0906-614-20. Four, eight. That's if you want to give your man of the match from the Cork Waterford game, one of our live featured matches this afternoon. And the Armagh Tyrone match, uh, those are the numbers again. And a final reminder that the phone line will say on that one, Donegal and Down. If you want to vote for an Armagh player, uh, pick the Donegal option. If you want to vote for a Tyrone player, just pick the Down option uh, when the recorded message offers you that. OK, that's it then. We must leave it for now. Back again later on. It's been an eventful day in Gaelic games. They didn't play in Bally Buffet, they didn't pee in Thordis, but if we don't fail the drug test, we're back again at 9.30. See you then.